Hello and welcome to Nintendo Weekly News, where your next black and white Wi-Fi match just might be your last. In Nintendo product news, it's been announced that both The Legend of Zelda and Pokemon will be receiving their own Monopoly versions by USAopoly coming this September. Monopoly is the ultimate way to gather your favorite people around and ruin lifelong friendships, and I'm particularly excited to hear that Pokemon will be getting its own deluxe Monopoly version with the oversized zinc tokens as opposed to the little rubber ones they had from classic Monopoly. Now, I'm both an owner of the old Pokemon Monopoly and even Nintendo Monopoly, but I'm still excited to see Nintendo using its brand in more and more ways. For some overseas news, the new Harvest Moon 3DS game, Linking the New World, was the best-selling game in Japan this past week. The newest title in the cutesy farm simulation series uses a feature called the Trade Station, where you are exporting your harvested crops to other countries that need them more than yours and will pay more for them. Think of it sort of like Animal Crossing, where you have specific town fruits that are worth more in other towns, except way deeper and much more economy based. I've been a huge fan of this series since the release of Harvest Moon 64, and I really hope it makes its way over to the States, even though it was just released in Japan. And in more Japan news, ex-Mega Man veteran Keiji Inafune has announced that he's working on more Mega Man-like titles than just Mighty No. 9. The upcoming 3DS title features all the awesome action platforming elements that you'd expect from an Inafune title, plus all kinds of crazy elements like electricity, psychic powers, portals. It looks incredible, but once again, it is not given a US date as of yet. Azure Striker Gunvolt comes to Japan this summer, and once again, we just gotta cross our fingers, hope that this thing makes a release to the rest of the world. Now, I have had a really weird streak where every time I've talked about a Japan-only game on Nintendo News, it got a US or European release date shortly afterwards, so, uh, let's hope the streak continues. In arcade news, the Mario Namco mashup, Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe, is officially stocked now at Dave & Buster's arcade restaurant chains. The arcade racer takes Nintendo characters, a handful of Namco Bandai ones, and puts them in a kart race with some of the Mario Kart formula, alongside a handful of new mechanics, such as combining two racers together to create a fusion kart that's like a tank where one player controls a turret and one player steers. Overall, I'm really happy to see the Mario Kart arcade franchise getting a little bit more love in the States. The last time I was able to play something out of Mario Kart Arcade was on a trip to Korea over five years ago, so to see it cropping up on a fairly large restaurant chain makes me pretty excited. And finally, in the big depressing news story of this week, Nintendo has announced that on May 20th they'll be shutting off the Wi-Fi multiplayer services for both the original DS, DSi, and the Wii. This is a huge bummer. There are a ton of really fun Wi-Fi games on both of these systems, such as Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart, and all the Pokemon titles. You've got Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black and White, Black and White 2. All of that will have its Wi-Fi multiplayer shut off. So, in general, a lot of people have taken a lot of offense to this news, and I totally understand. I mean, there are a lot of really fun Wi-Fi titles that you can play with today that all of a sudden, tomorrow, you will not be able to play with online. It is a great luxury in today's day and age to be able to play with people in other countries, across the states, wherever, at any time, over the Wi-Fi network. You can't always have a friend alongside you, and just losing these features for a lot of games that really depended on them to succeed is really sad. In general, I think the main reason Nintendo is doing this is simply because they are hurting financially, and it hurts them to support what is basically a free Wi-Fi service for systems that are old. They have to basically cut those losses and move forward to new systems. There are a ton of business reasons that people are speculating why Nintendo needed to do this, such as an intermediary company helping them connect their Wi-Fi network, being bought out by another company, and the cost now being more. We'll never know all the answers, but in general, it is just a really sad reality that Nintendo cannot afford to keep these services going. And so for the next two months, I encourage you guys, play as many Wi-Fi games as you can, both on the DS and the Wii, while you still got time to do it. That is it for today's Nintendo news. I know it's a huge bummer to end on a story like that, but as always, I will be here each week that I can reporting on the important things happening in Nintendo. If you enjoyed this video and want to get alerts for when my new ones are coming out, you can click right here to subscribe to my channel and learn right when new Nintendo news is happening. What I want to know from you guys is, how often do you use these older consoles to connect to the Wi-Fi and play multiplayer games? 
Click here if you'd say less than once a week. Maybe you've got new consoles, maybe you just don't use Wi-Fi that often. Or here if it's more than once a week and you're truly devastated for these upcoming May 20th shutdowns. Thank you as always for watching today's video, and I'll see you next week with more Nintendo news.